Uh, fourth lesson in current circuits, we're going to look at parallel circuits. And one of the main differences, we went from series circuits, remember with series circuits, you started, one thing we're going to follow, conventional current. So you started from the positive terminal of the battery, you followed through, you got the negative terminal, you had one, two, three in order. You had to go through every single one of those resistors, and that was the way it was. Whereas parallel circuits, all you have to do is get back to the battery. And that's another thing with this is when one's cut out, there's no path back to the negative terminal of the battery, so the circuit doesn't work when one when the circuit's open or, or one of these is missing. Whereas with a parallel circuit, you have many branches, many different directions for current to come back to the negative terminal. And as long as it comes back to the negative terminal, whatever is on that branch uh, would, would have power. So there's your uh, parallel circuit. Now we're in parallel circuits, so this light's going to stay on, this light's going to stay on, even though that one's off. Whereas with this one over here, when you open, when you take this out, you have an open circuit. So there's no connection to get to the negative terminal, and therefore current can't flow in the first place. So everything goes out because there's no current flowing through that circuit. Now some of the rules we're going to look at are different now. Um, these are the rules that we have here. The voltage is going to be equal. It's not current anymore. And I'll show you why. Hopefully you understand the difference. Um, current is going to add up. It doesn't It's not equal like it was before. And resistance is going to have this weird formula. And actually, you would rearrange this to solve for either one of these resistors or, or a total resistance, depending on what the problem entails. And then we have the good old usual. If we're talking about any single location, it's not a parallel parallel or series circuit, uh, we can use Ohm's law, which is rearranged three different ways or two different other ways um, so that you can use it quickly the way you need it to do. So this is not a bad note card if you ever made a note card to have for parallel circuits. Maybe on the other side have series circuit rules so you can quickly kind of go back and forth. So the thing about voltage, voltage, there's a bunch of charge all on one side. And the way that a uh, metal works, like a wire, is that those, that charge is shared throughout equally. And when you get to the negative terminal of battery, there's nothing left. And so since there's nothing left over here, the voltage is saying the difference also based on one electron moving. But in general, it's talking about the difference between this side and that side. And the difference between that this, this side right here and that side down here is the same there. The difference is the same there. The difference is the same there. So the voltage or desire of an elect or of a, of a charge, once again, conventional current, we just call it a charge, to travel along that path is the same through any one of those resistors. But those resistors might not be the same, so therefore the resistance, if the resistance is different, the current can be different as a result. But the voltage, the desire to follow those three paths uh, right here would be equal because the voltage is equal. Now, with current, think of cars. When there's more than one lane to come back to the beginning, once again, you have to start at the positive terminal, you have to get back to the negative terminal. You can split off, and you can have some current going down one path, while the other current splits off and goes down another path. But when it comes back to the battery, it's all going to be back to the regular. So watch out for things like if you see two amps there versus two amps here, this would mean this would be different. Um, going with what I have drawn here, this would be one amp, this would be two amps. So this would be two amps. The branch hasn't split off yet, but then when it splits off, we know that there's going to be one amp going here. At that point in time, it splits off again, and we have, take a look at what happened in the animation. Once again, this is strictly based on animation. 0.5 went down this way, so therefore, if I wanted to pick off this wire right here, this would have 0.5 amps. 0.5 amps. Once again, it's the same 0.5 amps that's traveling down this branch, and you can, you can you, when you see this little circle over the wire, just telling you how much current is going through the wire. So right here we have two amps, but then it splits off, and it just kind of changes from there. But it comes back. Once it comes back, once it gets all back together and passes this point, it's back to two amps returning to the battery. Now res resistance is a funny deal, because normally in series you add a, a resistor, and you increase resistance and you decrease the current. But in order to add another resistor in parallel, like this last one right here, you actually have to add another path. And when you add another path, no one ever have to ha has to take that path if it was going to make things worse. And so it's like having, you think of it, if someone builds a new street to school and the for main street is really pa packed up, but the second street um, is, you know, is another option, but it has a speed bump. 
that speed bump's not going to slow you down because you never take it if it would slow you down. You'd always use it to your advantage to actually speed yourself up. Um, having an extra route only, only well, can only, only help things, can only make the resistance less, and therefore the overall current of the circuit is going to be more as a result. And so that's where this weird equation comes to play. Uh, you're never going to use it as this. You're going to rearrange it. If you're solving for like an R uh, total resistance, you have to take the inverse of both sides, and that gets the RT up top, and you see what you see right there. Now, if you're ever solving for one of these, it doesn't matter which one. Whichever one you're solving for, you're going you're gonna to have to take, uh, first of all, you're going to have to, um, actually, let's start from this one up here, because you would never start from that one the way it is over there. If you want to solve for one of these, let's say, um, I guess I'll go with what I have down the bottom. There I was solving for R1. What you're going to have to do is you're going to have to take this mess right here, and you're going to have to subtract it. So you take a look how I take the 1 over RT, I subtract to get rid of this whole thing. I subtract the 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And then when I do that, I'm left with 1 over R1 equals 1 over RT minus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3. And then I have to do the inverse thing again. And by taking the inverse of both sides, I end up getting that right there. And so when you use that equation down the bottom and you rearrange it that way, if I was solving for R2, this would just be R1 plus R3. If I was solving, solving for R3, this would just be R1 plus R2 um, over here. But always the total, just based on the algebra. If you undo this and, um, and try to rearrange it, algebra would end up leading you to this. That's the only reason why um, this looks this way versus that looks that way. Okay, so with Ohm's Law, uh, so Ohm's Law will work anywhere where you have two out of three uh, pieces on location. That's going to be useful to start off anytime you see that. But next, if you have voltage, voltage is going to be useful to go to next because if you know voltage one spot, you know voltage everywhere. And then you always double check to see. You, know, you might go back to this to see if you have any more places where you can use Ohm's Law. But at some point in time, you're probably going to have to use some of the other rules and one's going to rearrange the way that they would be. So here's a question. What's the resistance of 5 and 10 ohm resistor in parallel? So it's going to be important because this tells you to use this form. Not You're not just adding them up. In series, you would have just added them up. And another thing to note is when you have, when you have resistors in parallel, the answer, so the equals, is always going to be lowest than the low. The, it's always going to be less than the smallest one because you, more paths are never going to, are never going to um, they're always going to decrease the resistance. So having this and then adding this 10 to it actually made that 5, the overall circuit, the combined 2 in parallel, is going to be less than 5 as a result. Always less than the lowest one. So just watch out for that. One way to check your answers. In this case, when you do the math, I get 3.33 ohms. This next one, once again, if you're watching this video, you should pause it. Um, I don't want to take too much of the, the data going through the whole lesson, so I might talk quicker than I need to. So you can pause it, do the work, and then come back and answer the question, and then check the question. So I know this one's going to be less than 5 still. And when I do the math, plug in the values, I get 2.5. 2.5 ohms. Here, uh, what's the resistance of unknown resistor? If the total resistance of the circuit is 2, and it's attached to two other ones. So this is the total, and this is R1, R2, whatever you want to call it. Let's see what I called it. Okay, I called it R2 and R3. It doesn't really matter which we call what. Plug in our values. And we get 3 ohms. Now, once again, this is the total. So, therefore, this is going to be less than 3, 10, or, five, or 15 ohms, the way that this is written. Okay, so let's go get to some problems. Um, here we have the 24 volts. Since I know the 24 volts there, I'm going to think about the VT equals V1 plus V. The voltage is the same. The difference between the charge there and this side is the same for all all of these. The battery, the first resistor, and the second resistor. And so that's going to be 24 volts. After that, I can do um, Ohm's, or Ohm's Law to solve for I anywhere, and so I start here. And then I go ahead and go there, and once again, it doesn't matter which one you do first. Either one would be just fine. And then lastly, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to follow it back. So this 3 amps was down this, uh, this trail. This uh, 4 amps was down this circuit. So that must have been 7 amps uh, when, when they started before they split off. So I just kind of followed it back. 
And then I can get back to Ohm's Law, and when I do the work, I get 3.42a, and I just round it to 3.43. Then I can do a final check. Let's just make sure this works. 1 over this plus 1 over that. Inverse that answer should equal that, and it does, at least close enough, depending on how you rounded. But that, as long as you have a close answer, you can assume you did it right. Okay, this next problem. I have to go ahead and I don't have two out of three things at any one location. I don't have voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and start by putting these three resistors together to figure out what the total is over here. And so when I do that, I get five ohms. And now I can go ahead and solve for voltage. So I go to Ohm's Law because I'm looking at location, just that spot. And I solve for voltage and I get 25 volts. Well, that's useful to me because that is equal everywhere in parallel. So let's push it on over, 25 volts there, 25 volts there, 25 volts there. And now we can go ahead and figure out the current at any location using Ohm's Law. So 25 divided by 15, we get the 1.67 amps. 25 divided by 15, once again, same thing. So I don't have to redo it three times. But let's just make sure this follows the check. 1 over this plus 1 over this plus 1 over this. And you get that answer and inverse it. And you should get, um, actually, that's not it. Uh, that's the current rule. Let me change what I just said. These three should add together to equal what started with, and they do, give or take a little bit of rounding. It would have been five amps there. So this checks off, and you can tell you did it correct. So this next problem, I have well, look, two amps, four amps, one amps. Well, what were they when they were together? When they were all together, they were seven amps. So I can plug that in right there. Now I can go ahead and solve for voltage using Ohm's Law. Now I can pass it along because that's the same everywhere. The voltage drop between this side and that side is the same no matter where, if you're at the battery or at the resistor. The difference between this side and that side, all the, electro, all the charge on this side and all the zero charge on that side on the negative terminal because everything's gone by that point in time, all the same. And now we can go ahead and do the um, Ohm's Law solving for R. Ohm's law again, solving for R using the 560 and 4, I get 140, 2, 280 on the first one, and then the third one, 560 divided by 1, it's just going to be 560. Now we can do the final check. This is what I was thinking of the last problem. Uh, 1 over this, plus 1 over this, plus 1 over this, and take the inverse of that answer. And when you do that, you get around 80. Once again, a little rounding, might, you might get 79 point something, or 70, or 80, 80 point something. That's fine, just a little bit of rounding is, is expected when you're doing bigger problems. Okay, now we have this problem. Well, we have amps. Oh, we have a lot of resistance here. We're going to have to figure out this one using the information from there. So I'll go ahead and rearrange the equation, the, the resistor equation for, for parallel to get to this, plug in my values. And when I plug in my values, I get the, a missing value of 400 ohms as my resistance. Now I can go ahead and I can solve for the voltage by doing Ohm's law on location using the 10 and the 400 to find the, the V2 right there. And then once I know it one place, I know it everywhere, so I can pass it along. 4,000 everywhere. Yeah, you might look at this question and say, yeah, that's a lot of voltage. Yeah, it probably is. I made this up. It might not be very, very real for, for this situation. This is that's a lot of voltage. Um, and then we can go ahead and 4,000 divided by 100. We're going to go ahead and look at the so we're going to just do Ohm's Law on location, so you get 40 amps total. So all of these must equal 40 amps, but let's go ahead and keep on going. So 4,000 divided by 200 is going to be 20 amps. And then we go over here, 4,000 divided by 400 is going to be 10 amps. And then we do our final check, 10, 20 plus 10 plus 10. When they were all together over here, should have been 40, and that checks out. So I'm pretty sure I did the answer correct. I got the answer right. Okay, and that's it. So um, hopefully that helps.